Happy 25 months, Eiffel 1 Art. It is what it is. Um, so, just to recap what happened. Um, he, he, he had one baby. Yes, it was the Joker. Ha 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 ha. Of course. Ha 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 ha. Of course. He, he, he had one baby. Yes, it was the Joker. Ha 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 ha. Of course. Ha 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 ha. Hello. My name is Abby Russell. This is my 100 baby challenge. Um, so, just to recap what happened, um, he had one baby, yes, with the Joker, ha 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 ha, of course, ha 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 ha, of course, he had one baby, yes, with the Joker, ha 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 ha, of course, ha 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 ha, of course, I think we have one baby, yes, with the Joker, ha 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 ha. Happy course. Monday, and then smile. Remy is pregnant with Linguini Alfredo's baby from Ratatouille. Linguini Alfredo's baby from Ratatouille. Joker, ha 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 ha, of course, ha 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 ha, 
What's up, gamers? Daily Bean, thank you for resubscribing for 24 months. 25 in total, 24 in a row. Thank you so much. Be glad. 14 months, 25 in total. And then Jessica, 80, nine months. Thank you all so much. Very much appreciated. Excited to watch my sister Wendy. Gonna get started in just a moment. See you there. All right, gamers, we're about to get started. Just accepted a phone call. <sighs> Incredible timing. Anyway, a lot of people were calling me this morning. Two, I didn't answer. I assume they were spam. But they were annoying either way. They were quite early in the morning, and I'm like, come the hell on. Come the hell on. This is a Los Angeles number, so I knew it was for me. Oh, Gplex, thank you for subscribing. Thank you for the two months, I appreciate it. All right, I'm gonna show my face here. Don't be scared, let's see if the camera's working, and boop, it is. Hello, what's up, gamers? I'm gonna put on some earrings, do you mind? Does this, do people get squeamish about people putting on earrings? This is something I'm now very curious about. I don't think they're too, like, needle-esque. The hole is already there, so to speak, you know? Hello, Mr. Kurtzo6. I have a seltzer that I made yesterday. Let's see how it tastes. Flat. Nice. Honestly, no complaints. Oh, my eyebrows are feeling crazy today. Does anybody else get real like anal about your eyebrows? I want them to all sit right. I'm getting my little eyebrow brush. All right, y'all are gonna see my eyebrow brush. Don't judge me for how many teeth it's missing. See, normal. It's not. A bunch of the teeth fell off. I don't know why. I don't do anything too crazy. I just brush my eyebrows. 90s ruined my eyebrows. Yes. Thankfully, I was not one for waxing, and now everyone's like, your eyebrows are incredible. Yeah, an eyebrow brush. Y'all don't brush your eyebrows? You gotta. I actually even put on face lotion today, and I'm feeling dry. I'm forgetting my whole routine. Y'all get to watch it, though. So, congrats to you. Y'all y'all are here for my skincare secrets. Definitely mornings where I wake up, my eyebrows feel tangled. Yeah, they get all like, I want them to lay flat. Flat and nice and even. And I also think as someone with curly hair, I think maybe it affects my eyebrows. Anyway, I use Elta MD. This is a skincare channel now. Ooh, we gotta do the hand thing. It's way too bright, it's way too bright. It wants to focus on my face, but. Elta MD, honestly, this is the stuff. Just do a little squirt. I do it in the mornings, and I do it at night when I wash my face. 
lotion. And then we're going to do the sunblock after. Because you gotta. I live in Southern California, and even if I didn't, you still gotta. It's the key to anti-aging. Sunblock. <laughs> Does LTMD really have a Twitch page? Crazy. Permed eyebrows should be a style. I agree. I love people who have those huge eyebrows, you know what I mean? That are like, wow, it's like inches long. Anyway, here's their sunblock. Wow. Wow, LTMD. Hmm. Uh, I can't wait for people to like yell at me on Twitter and be like, their chemicals are toxic. You're going to get cancer. I feel like that's always what happens when you share these kinds of things. And people let you know how bad everything is. Anyway. Oh, that look is ribbon. I might have done a little too much sunblock. Also, if you're doing, if you're doing your face stuff, you got to get the hands too. You got to get the hands too. You know what? Since we're here, I'm going to show my whole skincare routine because I think a lot of fellas out there, I mean a lot of people, but I think a lot of fellas don't think it's important that they don't have a skincare routine. They're like, it's going to be too much work. This is mine. It's really easy. I think it's great for fellas. I'll show you. Okay. All you got to do, the sunblock is kind of expensive. I will admit these are not very cheap. They usually last me a few months though, but it's about 50 bucks sunblock, 50 bucks for the skincare for the lotion. They're like 50 bucks each. Not cheap, I will admit. Okay, so what I do, what you do in the morning, you wet your face, you get all the gunk off from the night before. Usually for me, that means that I take a shower. And then you put on your face lotion. And then you put on your suntan. And then you're kind of good for the whole day. That's all I do. And then in the evening, I wash off the day. I use First Aid Beauty their facial skin cleanser. What you want is you want something that doesn't have any sulfates, is what I understand. You don't want any sulfates because that shit's going to dry you out. So that's all I do. And then I put on the L to MD, and then that's it. And then when I wasn't Welcome living... Welcome to Abby's Twitch stream. Welcome indeed. We're learning about skincare. I'm no expert. I had a friend teach me this. Thank you, Chloe. Um, but anyway, I also used to use uh, retinol, but... Now I live in Southern California and it's like kind of harsh for the sun. But if you use retinol, you have to use it at night. You wash up the morning and you have to use sunblock because it can make your skin a little more sensitive. But it really does make your skin look better. But there's like, I will say, if you're going to start doing this, you kind of have to ease into it one thing at a time. One thing at a time until you're used to it. Like do one thing for a week, add the next thing for a week, add the next thing, retinol being the last thing. And then you do the retinol like once a week. And if your skin's okay with it, you do it two times a week. You have to wait for your skin to get used to it. And the retinol is like, woo, your skin's not going to like it at first, but truly it will feel better after. I used to do retinol, but not anymore. Not anymore. I live in Southern California and it makes me nervous. It's all a little too Patrick Bateman for me. Literally all it was was soap and lotion. My man or person or gal, it's soap and lotion. How is that? How? I think that people need, I think you'll feel better if you wash your face. You'll feel better, you'll feel refreshed, and you'll have nice skin. People compliment my skin all the time, and I realize a lot of that's genetics. But <laughs> you want me peeling off a face mask on stream? Normalize it, honestly? That sounds fun. Um, okay. Sister Wendy, gotta open up Sister Wendy. It's gonna autoplay, here we go. Love that music. Um, but anyway, I think, you know, I was also one, I would just use like soap in the shower. And I think that's honestly kind of fine if your skin's chill with it. But I do think a little bit of lotion goes a long way. I will say I don't have oily skin, I have dry skin. So I don't have to worry about oil too much, but i are using a sulfur mask for breakouts. It's simple, but it works. Wow. Fresh Sister Wendy, let the day officially begin. Exactly. Anyway, sorry, I'm just reading chat now. <sighs> How would a dude get into facial skincare? I used to do cleanser, but I don't care what cream to use if needed at all. I mean, I think that's, there are a lot of good websites that have like low maintenance skincare routine. But again, mine is wash your face at night with a lotion or a face wash that doesn't have sulfates in it. And then use like a lotion as well also no sulfates just I, that's like enough and then sunblock in the morning with the lotion but it's really just like moisturize sunblock and then wash it at night and that's kind of all you need and then you've got a skincare routine and it's pretty easy i will say i really don't like um i don't enjoy at nighttime after i brush my teeth i hate washing my face 
every day I'm like, maybe today I'll skip it. And then I don't. And I push through and I wash my face. But when I'm like on my way to bed, I don't want to get my face wet. I don't want to get my face wet. Also, if you have hair on your face, you could shampoo it. They have special beard shampoos. They have special beard shampoos. Anyway, I feel like, uh, wait, hold on. I feel like face wash with moisturizer SPF is pretty much complete routine. Yes. Yes. Everything else is extra. I will say it also feels good to invest in yourself. Fellas, I know I'm talking to the fellas out there because I feel like there's a lot of dudes who are like, skincare, not for me. And I'm like, it's nice to take care of yourself, you know? Nice to take care. I am jealous of beard shampoo. It seems like a fun thing to do. Fun thing to do. But I think it's nice. I think it, it makes you feel good to... Give your face a little massage. I also exfoliate. There are these really good Korean exfoliator scrubs that I use that are really affordable, really cheap. Um, I'm going to link them in the chat now. I'm going to do an Amazon link. Don't yell at me. Let me find it. But I use that on my whole body every day, and everybody's always telling me how soft my skin is. Um, here we go. Is this it? Yes, these. These are the thing you want. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, this is the stuff. If you want to exfoliate, this is where you exfoliate. Try to get my husband to condition his beard because it makes my arm itch when he cuddles on me, but it hasn't stuck yet. Oh, it's brutal. It's brutal. <laughs> yeah, I have no complaints about Amazon. They're a perfect company. Don't clip that. Anyway, I think I think it's nice to invest in yourself. I know it's a thing I have to put some real effort into of like, this is good for me. This is a good use of my time to, um, you know, wash my face, put some lotion on. And it's, it's an investment in myself is how I see it. And I know sometimes it feels like a waste of time, but it's not, it's really useful. And people notice, people notice, and it's fun. You get fun little like, you get little things. I also truly have three products that I use, it takes maybe 10 minutes total in my whole day, and it's pretty easy. Not to wax poetic about washing your face, but I was very intimidated for a long time, and then I was like, I guess I should do this, and my friend Chloe told me how, and I was like, wow, yeah, it is nice. At the very least, whatever sunblock you use, I think it's nice to have a sunblock in the day. And I also know as a white person, it's different because, you know, when it shows up white in my face, it's kind of fine. And some sunblocks are very, like, white on um, dark skin. So I get it, but. <sighs> so I just had to have some coffee. Oh, we're about to get started. But I did have my uh, groceries delivered the other day. And what they'll do is if it's like, we don't have that one option, we'll find an alternative. And they gave me milk that's designed for babies. And it does taste a little different. <laughs> and I don't know if it's weird that I'm drinking it as an adult. But it's like special baby milk. It's not breast milk. I mean, it's cow breast milk. But it's like baby milk. It's like the, what's that brand that has the cow on it? It's, I'm sure there's only one milk brand that has a cow on the cover. Uh, it's yeah, it's formula. It's it comes in a powder and has a baby's face on it. Um, let me find. It's like Horizon, Horizon Organic Baby Milk. Yeah, Horizon Growing Years. Should I be concerned that I'm drinking this as an adult? I'm gonna link this in the chat as well. It does taste different. I will say, it tastes different. Um, but I'm still drinking it. <laughs> It is cow breast milk. Y'all joke, but it is. Um, I mean, it adds prebiotics, so it's good for little bellies. Um, I don't know what choline is, but it has choline and DHA omega-3. So, milk. Healthy and delicious, and they show a picture of their baby drinking it. Why is it like a yellow color? Mine is pure white. They have a cup of it. Why do they look so yellow in this cup? Also, people act like I want to see their kids drinking milk, and I don't. Stop showing your child drinking milk from the carton. Anyway. Anyway. How can they get milk out of a baby? I don't understand. That's good. I think Dolly Parton has a song about clo choline. That's good. Um, is there something special about this milk? Because I am drinking it. Anyway. 
Shall we get started? Let's ask Sister Wendy. What's the deal with the milk? What's the deal with milk? Okay, great. Okay. Um, alrighty. Ready, set, milk. Oh, wait, no. We need to go to six. Oh, we're just plowing through these. We only have a few left. And then there's no ten. Damn. Okay, here we go. Got to get the captions on. I'll turn this down. It's pretty loud. Okay, y'all can let me know how the balance is. Uh, once. Here, I'm actually gonna keep it where it was and turn it down from here. But y'all let me know how the balance is for old Sister Wendy. We cannot see me. Okay, how about we do. Uh, boop a doop and then boop a doop boop. Now you can see me. Okay. <laughs> this is a nun with an eye patch who tells me to stop spanking it. I want to know who that nun is. I gotta know. Okay, let me know how the audio is when she starts talking. has a group of truly great painters, all jostling for attention at the same time. You have a golden age of painting. What makes it happen? We don't know. It's a freakish occurrence, really. For a country to have one is rare enough. But in the 17th century, no fewer than three countries had a golden age. Quiet, okay. Spain, France, and perhaps especially here, in the Netherlands. Ooh, are they gonna show the like peasant art? Where it's like paintings of peasants and stuff. Is Wendy better? Is she better? Ooh, pirate then. Okay, we're gonna click this and look at it later. Oh shit. <laughs> That's fun. Audio's good. Nice, nice, nice. Wow, look how foggy it is. I've never been to the Netherlands, but I'd love to. A traveler in Holland was astonished to find that everyone had paintings on their walls. Bakers, butchers, candlestick makers. But he was even more astonished by the extraordinary quality of these paintings. Every artist had his own line. What did the customer want? Some wanted landscape, that special glory of Holland rescued from the sea. Some wanted to gaze with the satisfaction of ownership on the richness of their tables. Others, Dutch Protestants perhaps, took a more austere pleasure in contemplating the light and space of a church interior. I wonder if they're going to show that one of the like woman pouring into the jug. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see. But I'm Dutch sure that's life from Holland, was far from Dutch. still. It's like a very famous Dutch painting. They were peasants painting. junketing with nice. cheerful vulgarity. Nice, having a little fun. And non-peasants having banquets equally vulgar and cheerful but more expensive. Part of the celebration was a group master. portrait, and who better than Franz Hals to boost a boozy ego? His laughing cavalier is one of the best known images in art. Oh, I love this her smiling Dutch and walking away! Radiantly what a pose shot, I so love that! That we will be as impressed as he is by his flashy clothes and lady killing moustache. Ooh, <laughs> Wendy. Wendy is always like vaguely horny and like vaguely insulting of how people look. It's either Dutch like artists were not you're making me travels. horny or you are gonna make me throw up because of how your face looks. Towns. And I love that. We think of Jan Vermeer and we think of Delft. Man, nun capes look fucking cool. <laughs> Delft was not one of the great Dutch cities, but it was beautiful. And Vermeer lived there all his life. Gave Vermeer everything he needed. What Vermeer loves best is a modest room with light coming through the window and somebody, a woman, standing alone. Mm. I'm pretty sure this is Vermeer is the one who does the pouring pouring he jug. Constantly paints sure. variations of this, and they're always immensely still, which is surprising, really because he lived in a very small house with his wife and 11 children and his mother-in-law. A very noisy environment. 
Mm. And yet, despite this, or, or more likely, because of this, he always painted silence and stillness and light. It's a nice dress. Reminds me of like an Adidas tracksuit. I want an Adidas tracksuit that like egg yolk yellow Some with the black. Some artists need explanation. Good luck. Sometimes paintings have hidden meanings, but with the mirror, you have only to look. It is peaceful to listen to. I love Sister Wendy. She's a vibe, and the vibes are good. You can talk about this picture, the woman reading the letter. You can say here's a pregnant woman. Oh. She's reading a letter with great intentness, probably from her distant lover or husband. Mm. And there's the map behind to tell us he's gone away on one of these great Dutch voyages of exploration. And that's not untrue. But that's like talking to fill up a space, because that's not what the picture is about. That's not what's moving us, the human predicament of this woman. What could be less interesting in itself than just a plain white wall? And yet, look, how magically beautiful. Light is the only actor in this picture. And in our age, which is a noisy age, an age that lacks a lot of talk and activity, how we need something like this, something full of a contemplative peace that just says, stand still. Damn. Hell yeah, Wendy. I don't think I've ever seen any of this stuff in person. I would love to. Think of Holland and you think of a windmill. And this is truly extraordinary. The greatest Dutch painter was a miller's son. From the start, Rembrandt was amazing. Look at him, stretching his artistic muscles, seeing what he could do with a face. And the fact that it's his face seems almost immaterial. Yeah, just like Pentiment. Rembrandt did more self-portraits than any other painter, but I don't think it was ever from conceit. He plays with his face, that snub-nosed peasant countenance. Different expressions, different get-ups. Interested with the impersonality of a scientist observing his laboratory animal. Here's the mature Rembrandt, mid-40s, totally there, that great body looming up at us out of the darkness, just that touch of white at the collar, and then everything concentrated on the face. All the color, all the light, all the interest is there, every wrinkle and shadow shown to us. Now, there's a great feeling of tension in a self-portrait like this, and I think it comes from Rembrandt's central challenge. He wasn't very good at painting emotion. He was unsurpassable in painting stillness and reflection. You can imagine him saying to a sitter, don't move. But what does he see when he looks in the mirror to paint himself? A man in violent motion, painting hand flashing away, face intent with getting it right. So how does he solve it? Well, he solves the hands all right. He sticks his thumbs into his girdle. Girdle, the that's face. a fun word. He decides to show us the face intent with the effort of painting. Those small eyes are absolutely brilliant. It's a stern face as he seizes the image before him. And this is exactly what you would have seen if you'd sat before Rembrandt in his studio having your portrait painted. Wow, it's like I'm there. I don't think I'd want to sit for a painting. Rembrandt has also, an Mr. Steve, who asked if she's in a museum. I think she is in museums life. all the time. Like, wherever the paintings the are, she Rembrandt's goes there and chats. Are and unforgettable. Sometimes she's in churches. Whatever. She has no script on these shows. What? She must it's have, like, had an idea of what she's going to talk about, to though. Top. top painter, top city. He moved to Amsterdam. And there he had the good luck, or was it cunning, to marry Saskia, a very rich, though rather plain, young woman. Looks like her head's on backwards. She's got a real, like, exorcist thing going on there. Rembrandt seems to have had no money sense whatever, and spent his wife's fortune with reckless enthusiasm, buying a mansion and furnishing it with extravagant luxury. 
while, and then it all fell apart. The money wasted away, and Saskia died. Shit, because of the money, he or...? Her, because when he sketches her on her sickbed, he does so with great compassion. Damn. Commissions dwindled, his debts increased, and he went bankrupt. His only surviving child died, and he faced an impoverished and what could have been a tragic old age. Rembrandt, Jesus. But Rembrandt remained Rembrandt, resolutely self-confident and fully aware of his genius. And there was Ooh. a human consolation <laughs> Hello. too, his beloved Hendrika. He painted her again and again, always with the intimacy of profound knowledge, whether as herself or as a character in one of the stories he delighted I think in. Eleven Children was um, this Vermeer, a Vermeer, Vermeer? I think so. I think that, that was a different artist. I'm forgetting Picture. Vermeer, Only I think. Rembrandt could have painted. Could be wrong, though. A poet once said about his beloved that one would almost say her body thought. And I think that's what we Oh no, here, here comes the body shaming. It's gonna happen. Wendy? It's the story of Bathsheba. Wendy, what are you gonna say? I'm scared. The beautiful Jewish okay. matron who huh? was bathing on the flat roof of her house. And King David saw her, <laughs> fell in love, and sent a message across asking her to sleep with him. But she was married to one of King David's generals, Uriah the Hittite. And this yeah, is the subtitles moment. Subtitles are really struggling with this section. When she's just got the letter. Ooh, slow pan and down. She's Hello. She's experiencing to the full what it means to be tempted. She's holding the fragile letter of temptation in her strong woman's hand. And at her feet is the Hittite maid drying her toes, symbol of her husband and his adoration. The look on her face tells us everything. That, that indescribable look, half sad, half soft half smiling to herself. This is not just a crucial moment for Bathsheba personally, but for her whole nation, the Jewish people, because the son that would be born to her and David was the great Solomon, the greatest king they ever had. And Rembrandt somehow makes us understand that, the complexity of, of being human, of having to make lonely choices that will affect not just us, but countless others whom we may never know. And that, that depth, that awareness of human vulnerability and human strength is the signature, I think, of Rembrandt. Cool. It's hard to imagine any rival to Rembrandt. Is there a toothpaste brand called Rembrandt? But Far to the south, Spain too was enjoying her greatest moment, another golden age. There is. So there cool. was a saying in Spain, think of Madrid <clears throat> and you think of the court. And what a court. The most powerful in Europe, all hierarchy and rigidity. Watercolor brand. Everything centered on the king whose sense of his own dignity forbade him even to smile in public. What a white a horse. A fearsome figure who could make or break reputations and on whose approval every artist waited trembling. But this king, Philip IV, had a genuine love of art. I feel like I know very little he about Spain. He had a raft of painters at court, but among them, another young man, whom he realized was not only a great painter, but in fact, one of the greatest painters, in fact, the greatest painter the world has ever seen, Velasquez. And he painted the greatest painting in the world, a slice of life in the royal it. court. Um, irrepressible 32 Tal saying, I feel like South, a South American or two might disagree that 1650s Spain was super awesome. <laughs> Uh, okay, here we go. Ooh, I always pause on the naked ladies, and I'm okay with it. <laughs> oh, I know this painting. Oh shit, it's huge. I've never seen it like in context. Las Meninas, 
is the only painting I find daunting. How to explain its impact, this, this incredible sense that we're really there in Velasquez studio that sunlit morning in Spain. And the maids of honor have brought in the little princess, that silver and gold creature in the middle, with all her entourage and her, her playmates, the, the dwarves at whom the Spanish court laughed. But Velasco doesn't laugh. He paints everybody, including that wonderful dog, with the same respectful interest. And he paints them so superbly, just little kind of squiggles of paint that at a distance become silver and gold and, and rosettes and, and fair hair. And, you have like the little and then as we look, we see there? the royal child is not the center. The center is somebody who isn't actually in the picture, the king with his queen reflected there in the background. But I noticed. It's so important that even though they're not physically there, they dominate. But where they must be standing to be reflected is more or less where we're standing. And all these people are looking out at us. And I really think this is part of the involvement we feel, that we're involved with the king and queen because we're standing in the same position, and so we're also there. They're he's not also visible. painting them. You can see he's painting. And of course, whatever the king and queen may think, the one in control is Velasquez, yeah, standing there bigger than anybody else. And the fact that he's standing has for him a Did personal significance. Should I get my hair cut like that? Because only a nobleman could stand in the presence of the king. But for us, the importance is what he's standing there to do. And what he's standing there to do is really to work a sort of miracle because he's going to stop time. In a moment back then, the major domo would go out that door and the little princess would take the cup. But Velasquez, it's, he's made it eternal. It will always be there. And we'll always be in it, also escaping the constraints of time. Damn, cool. What always baffles me about Velasquez is that it wasn't enough for him to be such a great painter. He didn't just paint for the court. It was his emotional center. Nobody ever less needed the glittering baubles of aristocracy. Look at that little dog. But that's what he yearned for. He toadied up. He was royal housekeeper, whose chores ranged from seeing to the sweeping of the corridors to decorating the new royal tomb. An outrageous confection, totally alien to his own taste. But that's what the king wanted. He squandered his painting time, but it paid off. He got the Red Cross of Nobility the year before he died. And would you believe it? Back he goes to Las Meninas and paints it in, conspicuous on his bosom. I shake my head over Velasquez. Why, why, why? And yet, to be fair, he got both his desires, worldly recognition, and eternal fame. This is his last great legacy, telling the fable of Arachne. Arachne was a master weaver who challenged Pallas Athene, the goddess of weaving, to a contest. Now, she didn't win, but she didn't lose. It was a draw. And that's what Velasquez says the artist is, one who is equal to the gods. But he doesn't just want to tell us this. He wants us to realize it. So he doesn't set that story in the forefront. In the forefront, we have the non-artists. One woman is carefully drawing back a curtain to show us this tableau of the laboring women who make the thread from which the great master tapestry weaver will produce her masterpiece. Damn, this is cool. I don't know about this painting. It's it's almost overwhelmingly immediate. This shabby room with its oh, poor women, all working so hard. But that's not the artist's studio. 
the artist studio is up there and it's utterly different. The artist stands in the middle in her flowing robes. She's surrounded by elegant aristocratic women, her attendants in silks. And in the center, confronting her, is the goddess Pallas Athene, angry that a mere mortal should equal the gods. The story goes on that in her anger, Pallas Athene turned Arachne into a spider, which didn't really She turned her acne her, into a spider? She still went on weaving in another form. Only one person looks at us, and that's the elegant lady right on the end. She is summoning us to leave the everyday world, the world we understand, daily life, and move up in our imagination into the world of the artist. Mm. And Velasquez trusts us enough to look at his painting and go with him into the magical, divinely touched unknown that the artist can show. That's a cool painting. I didn't know about it. Also, good luck with your broken hip, Mr. Hanuk101. That's terrible. Hope you're recovering well. Hope you're taking it easy. I know I'm bad at, like, not doing anything. The I'm French not good at that kind of recovery. Golden Age, amazingly, didn't happen in France at all. It happened in Rome. Two Frenchmen who came here and stayed were Nicolas Poussin and Claude Lorraine. Both had a golden mm. age as much in what they chose to paint as in the way they painted it because they were in love with the world of the past, the classical world. Hmm. Hmm. Poussin loved Rome. He was a scholar, and in Rome he found the freedom to paint what he liked for his scholarly friends with no king, no boss, no establishment. He was his own wow, establishment. Art history poggers. Yeah. Oof. Black ice. Oof. Yeah, the scary stories. This is what I thought when she said acting a spider. She didn't say that. Poussin but the can be a daunting it. Anyway, artist. Poussin. And it's surprising that he even stoops to paint a self-portrait. Certainly, it wasn't vanity. Look at that big fleshy nose. Here we go. Secretive eyes. Here we go, Wendy. Everyone, take a shot. She's calling someone ugly again. Yet, even though he imprisons himself within the great rectangles of his canvases, he does so to be alone with his muse, the beautiful young woman, the symbol of painting itself. Poussin is the most intellectual of artists, but also the most poetic. We catch our breath before his great Rebecca and Eliezer. It's crazy how someone can this so ugly and make work so artists, beautiful. But only Poussin understood the underlying meaning. It's the Old Testament story of Abraham, who had gone far away and was living among the pagans, and wanted a daughter for his son Isaac from the old country. And he sent Eliezer, his servant, to find a girl. And poor Eliezer, faced with this responsibility, decided when he got there, he'd go to the well where the women were and ask for a drink of water and see if anybody would have the kindness also to water his camels. And that's exactly what Rebecca did. And here you see the relieved Eliezer bringing out all the betrothal jewels and Rebecca very serious, thoughtful, pondering whether she's going to take this enormous step. And the expressions on every single face are different. There are those who are quite unaware of what's going on. And there's this girl who's absolutely stunned by it, so aware that she's not even noticing where the water's going. And then there's a rather cynical lady, I love her, the one in the pink and green, who's saying, well, really, she knows all about that would be me. kind, no good will come of this. I'd be one of the hecklers hanging out the other ladies being like, I don't need those friggin' field. jewels. Would like to have something happening to her life, too. 
But it's not a lover coming into the world of women. This is an emissary, a go-between. His face is in the shadow because he doesn't really matter. He's the one who puts before her a moral choice. Will she place her trust in this institution, as it were, of marriage and leave this warm, beautiful, comforting world of her friends and go into the world of the men? And that's the world behind that rigid, architectural, solid world that she hasn't yet lived in because she's been a maiden in her father's house. And now she's being called to go under somebody else's authority. And even more than that, you see, over there, the world of distance, because she's not just going to live in her own city. She's been called to go out into a far country and live there. And I think what Poussin is trying to show us is that a, a relationship, a marriage, must be based on trust, almost a, a blind trust. Eliaza has to show some trust in believing that his intuition, that a girl who's kind to camels is going to be a good mother and wife. But what trust for the girl to leave all she knows and go into the distance The longing for a perfect world of golden sunlight and beauty lost forever was specially marked in the other great Frenchman to come to Rome, Claude. What he saw in the rolling plains round Rome inspired him to create a world of myth and poetry which he made visual in idyllic landscapes. This is not really, this is kind That's of an real. aside. I always think it's What's interesting when like, like, because I feel like a lot of Americans are, like, very romantic about, like, Europe or, like, Japan or something. I always think it's very interesting when you see, like, people from other countries be, like, real romantic about America. And I think it's fun, genuinely. Because it's, like, you forget that it's, like, oh, yeah, it's, like, a novelty for people to live here. I mean, I don't forget. I, I feel very privileged to be an American. But anyway, I always find that interesting. Um, and I feel like these, like, Frenchmen were, like, Rome! We love Rome! Anyway... There's a cool looking little Lord, building. There's no difference. Oh shit, there it is! Look at those ducks. If you don't know much about art, and most of us don't, Rude, then hurtful, a sword is very true. comforting because you can nearly always recognize one. There'll be a great luminous landscape stretching off to infinity, and there'll be classical buildings, and there'll be something happening in the center. Now, something isn't anything. I mean, it's not going to be villagers having a fry-up. It will be something <laughs> biblical or mythical. But you do get the feeling that it's really just a pretext for the glories of the landscape. I want to see him having a fry-up. Now, up. this particular Claude is one of his very greatest works. And here, I think the something matters. The title of this picture is, take a breath. Landscape with the father of Psyche sacrificing to the temple of Apollo. And it's about a late Greek myth in which the father was very anxious about his daughter's marriage and he comes to ask the priests of Apollo and he gets a very confusing and mysterious answer. Hmm. So there they it all seems are. Seems not useful. In that island of priests need to work center, on their bedside manner. Anxious, huddled, questioning. It's a cool crown. They gotta make pointy crowns again. On with the maidens bearing gifts and the heifer coming to be sacrificed, and those great Greek temples surging up behind them. But look at that temple. Look at the greenery on the top. Look how it's being engulfed by the trees. All this human activity and the human buildings, they are so unimportant compared with the peaceful immensity of sunlit nature. That's what will last. Yeah. We, we always want in our lives stability and peace and beauty. And it's there, says Claude. It's all around us. This is an idealized landscape. It wasn't really like this. But it's true enough with that tender light and the sense of really having looked at the sparkling water and the trees to make us just, for the time that we're looking, believe. Mm. That is nice. 
Also, I agree with Philly Bosch that she should jump into the painting. Oh no, it's over! Like Mario. Oh, she did jump into the painting! <laughs> She's in the Mario level! Get some coins! Oh no, a mushroom! Wow. I love Sister Wendy. This is a good one. She called someone ugly. She got a little horny. In our next program, Ooh. we move from an age of gold to one of revolution. Revolution. Cool. I want... She's going to start getting wet. Ooh, Impressionism. I feel like I'm sad we don't have the tenth one because I want, like, her talking about modern stuff. Very fascinated. Anyway, I love Sister Wendy. Oh, so much. And I have a little bit of time. The setup for... She got booted from the nunnery? <laughs> oh, no, I see. I see. Ooh, Goya! There's a new Great Art Explained that goes deep into Goya's dark paintings. Very exciting for me. Anyway, I'm going to start up Breath of the Wild. I'll uh, give you some music while I do. See you in two minutes. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I think the ad... Did the ad play? I tried to, but I don't think it played at all anyway. Boop! Breath of the Wild. I got out of the maze. I got out of the maze. I just looked it up. Because I fucking hated that maze. No ad. Alright, nice. I love when Twitch works like it should. But that's fine. Anyway. No maze! So I also don't know what to do next. Camera's gone again. Well, that's an easy fix. Ready? I'm just gonna go a boop and then a boop. All right. See, this is me in the maze. <laughs> oh, let me uh change my stream info. Breath of the Wild. I almost did Breath of the Year again. Oh, I love doing that. But Breath of the Wild. We'll get back to Nancy Drew eventually. But as it stands right now, my laptop, the battery needs to be replaced or something, and it's driving me crazy. Um, anyway, I have a full new outfit now. But it's driving me nuts. And until I, like, replace the battery, which I need to, like, look into, um, it's just just a huge pain in the ass, to be honest. Oh, here we go. New outfit. Link's showing a lot of skin on this one. Why is it in French? Because I'm learning French. Okay. Um, I'm probably gonna like zoom out of this one. Okay. Um anyway, sorry, I'm looking for my armor guide, Breath of the Wild. We just got the barbarian armor set. That's what Link is currently wearing. Um, should we do the climber armor set? Found in Ridahi Shrine. In between dueling peaks on the road. Dueling peaks. This is more... I have no idea where that would be. Okay, we're gonna look up Ridahi Shrine. I want to get all the outfits. I want to get all the outfits. I also have the DLC, apparently. So let me see if there's actually a more fun outfit. The Desert Vaux armor set is pretty cool, actually. How do you get to Guerdo's Secret Club? We need to look into that one. I'm also down for spoilers, as long as people aren't yelling at me for like, go do that. But if you want to tell me where stuff is, we've all played Zelda. I don't mind. Um, I want the Tangle set. Night speed up. Oh, I have to do the Master Trials DLC. That seems exhausting. 
A lot of these DLC ones, I mean, it makes sense, but I just want to, like, go fight them in a chest somewhere. I don't want to, like, show that I'm actually good at the game. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? I do kind of want this rubber one where you can't get shocked. Okay, where is this shrine location? It looks to be, like, here. Oh, it's already marked. I guess? Huh. Okay, well, we're gonna head over there. Go there. Okay. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. Sister Wendy, she's too good for an impression. <laughs> there are, is there, I did French in secondary school, that's fun. Is there a lot of video game art? I mean, I guess all video games are art. If you want to be that guy about it. Oh, I also need to do the bird shrine. I was told that that would be a really helpful one to have. But I can't figure out how to get up to the bird thing and I didn't feel like looking it up enough. Oops, I almost did a little dive, which would have been fun. But, okay. It's the tingling. It's telling me I'm near a shrine. I'm not sure where exactly it is though. So we're gonna stay on this ridge. I'm gonna use my hammer to smash. Smashing time. Oh, that's a mushroom. All right. This one is for smashing. Let's use this guy so we can get rid of it and have more space for other weapons. Okay. Let me know if y'all see a shrine anywhere. I feel like... Oh, there it is. All right, that was easy. I bet Wendy would love Tingle. I wonder what Wendy th would think about video games. Because I feel like a lot of people don't see them as art. And I think it's like any other art form where there's high art and there's low art, you know? And I think there's a lot of video games that are high art or, I don't know, fully high art. Because they are kind of, well, yeah, I think so, probably. I also, I mean, I think that's also a bigger question of, like, what makes high art? I'm sure there's also a lot of, like, white supremacy stuff in that and whatever, you know. You get it. Okay. So what are we doing here? This is going to go in there. And then what? Oh, 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 this is going to move, I bet. Nope, that's going to move. Okay. Off to a good start. We're going to climb so freaking fast after this, you have no idea. Okay. Uh, oh, I see. Oops. This way, this way. Whee! Okay, this this is easy so far. I'm trying to see if there's maybe a chest back there. Cause sometimes you gotta like look and then there'll be a chest and it's like, oh I miss a chest. Uh don't think I missed anything there. That's good. Sorry, I'm just poking around. Don't wanna miss some chests. I don't think I am. Okay. Oop. Huh. There's a chest there. Whee! Oh shit! I wasn't paying attention. Ah, uh, that's a shame. Alright, well, follow your death, Link. Uh, she definitely would like Journey or something. Yeah, I don't know. I gotta- I'm- that's why I'm really eager to hear her talk about more modern art. To see what her take on that is. I mean, she had- I really enjoyed her take on like... I think it was like a- Woo! Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Okay, now what I need to do. Will it take me back? Okay, good. So we're gonna pick up the ball and set it on that thing. Okay. Give me. Then... Gentle. What? What? Can I... Hmm, hold on. Come on! How do I get it to stay up? Oh, I see. I'm gonna have to go on a whole little journey over here. <sighs> okay, gimme, gimme. Hmm. Okay. And, okay. Can't 
see you so well, Link. You're my way. Okay. Do you think we'll need both? I feel like one's just a spare, but I'll take it just in case. You never know. Don't fall over the edge, Link. Don't fall over the edge. You don't want your your goods yet. Great timing, honestly. Great timing. <laughs> I want the new Breath of the Wild. I know it's not Breath of the Wild, but you know what I mean. Oh shit, I put that on the wrong thing. It is fine. We got it, it is okay. But I realized that could have been bad. Woo, climbing gear, climbing gear. Yay, All right, gimme, gimme. Doodle 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 doodle. All right. All right. We've solved the puzzle successfully. I think this climbing gear is going to be easy to get. And I don't particularly care for the look of it. But you know what? Say la vie. Say la vie. When does the new Zelda come out? Is it the summer or is it sooner? I'm going to look this up. Um, New Zelda release date. May 12th. It sticks to that one, May 12th. Ooh, ew, God, Zelda figure. Oh, God. What is this? I'm gonna show y'all something freaky on Etsy. I don't like it one bit. What is this thing? What is this? Gotta switch over my cam. Hold up. Why? What is this? Who is this? This is Zelda? I don't like anything about it. Explain. Zelda's looking for her new owner. Now's your chance to own the original figure in your home. Who is this? That's no Zelda I know. I hate that. I hate it. Why would they do that? Uh, uh, why? From Pet Cemetery, is it? <laughs> I don't like it. Zelda. Yeah. Should we go um do the bird? How do I get up to the top of the bird? Do y'all know? Okay. I'm looking at the climbing set. Where do I go for the next piece? Um, I need to go to Chosh Quaita Shrine. Okay. Small island south of the Hateno Tech Flat. Okay. Is this the... Mm, no. Is this one? No. I think all the labs are in like each corner is my guess. And I've only found two. Um, let's see. Location. Uh, this is not helpful. Okay, it seems to be here. So there's this. I think this is the shrine they want me to do. I guess I haven't beaten it. I don't know if I got lazy or what, but. Anyway, I have to go in like 15 minutes pretty shortly, but anyway. Boop, 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 boop. So I'm here. All right, well, let's, uh, let's go in. I don't know why I didn't beat this, so we'll see. Maybe it'll be really annoying. Time will tell. Boop, 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 boop. I might put my other hat back on because I like having the full set going. I like having a full set. I like the little boost. I like the bonus. If this is when I have to like fight something, that's probably why I didn't. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. So attack up, sure. Although what does this do for me? Okay. Defense. Alright. I want more of these too, but it's expensive. Okay, yeah, we'll do a tack up. I might even need some food. All right, here we go. I hate these dudes. They take so long to kill. They're so annoying. Okay. Pocket card jockey is at an Apple Arcade. What is that? What game, if any, would I consider high art? I think something like Papers, Please. 
I think there's like a certain commentary to it. It is hard because like games ultimately are supposed to like entertain. Not that, you know, high art back in the day wasn't either. I think it's sort of like stuff has passed through time that it's like, well, it's not really entertaining in the same way anymore because like we have, we've furthered entertainment. But I think something like that is a good example. I also think, I think things, because there are a lot of games that's like, this can only be played as a game, if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Like, anyway, I need to focus on this dude a little bit, but there are certain things that's like, if this was another media, it wouldn't work. Um, I think Outer Wilds is an example of that. The game is very good. Timing's bad. Oh shit. Okay, here we go. Oh, gotta get around this pillar. Okay, good. Oh, come on. Oh. My timing is bad. I hate these dudes so much. There we go. Full say. No. Uh, I don't feel like fighting with, with other stuff. Should we do this katana? I'll do the epee royale. Okay, here we go. Oh, fuck off, dude. You should have hit that pillar. That is cheap. That's cheap and you know it. Okay, here we go. Pillar, pillar, hit the pillar. Okay, that one's fine. How come that one worked, but the other one didn't? It's so cheap. These, this is the main problem, is it just takes fucking forever to kill these things. I'm jumping. I jumped. Oh, fuck you. Alright, Link. Go eat something. Why don't you eat? Um, yeah. Chutney, Robusto. I need to make some more food, huh? Nice. Good work. Okay, now you're gonna run into a pillar. Ah! Or the wall. Fuck you. Fuck you, man. Sure, it'll be fast. What? Did that not give me very much health? It must have been like a salad. <sighs> Journey will end that after I experience someone who learned to break the game. Wow, that's fun. I do think Journey was a really incredible one. I also think what's interesting about like Comparing video games to like a painting or another piece of high art in that sense is that there's a certain interactive element and I don't really know what to make of that as far as like How to gauge The high artiness of it. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't know how the interactivity Would affect it being high art. I also don't necessarily know how I would define high art so much of that is sort of just like societal, I don't know. Yes! Fucking fine. Okay, behind the pillar please. It's gonna hit the other pillar I bet. Yep, what did I say? I know. Okay. Yeah, sure. What?
fine. Crash into this pillar. Hate your guts. I hate these fights so much. This is why I walked away from this one. They make me very annoyed. They just take so long. It's not worth it. They take too long. Okay. Eat my chutney. And eat something else. That's sure. Oh shit, what are you doing? What are you doing? Didn't do this before. Am I supposed to like Whee! Is that what I'm supposed to do? That's what I'm doing. Please. All right, <coughs> we're doing it. Oh, sword's gonna break. Please let me kill this first. Okay, fine. Um, sure. I don't think this will do well on this guy. Also, I can't use a shield, which is bad. Okay, I'm gonna need a different one. No, do the laser. Oh shit, not that laser. This is gonna hurt me. I feel like it will. Let's move away a little bit. So when it explodes, it won't hurt me. Oh, fuck off, dude. Alright, let's eat some of these durians. What do you think? Stop! Uh, leave me be! Okay. I want... It's like a weapon. Okay, I don't know if this one... Uh, everything I have is two-handed! Alright, well, that's a shame. Fuck, I fucking hate these dudes. I hate you! Leave me be! Uh. Still? I'm gonna have to run and hit it to break it out of its little spell. It's my guess. Serpentine! 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 I fuck! I hate this game! I hate it. I hate it. Okay, we'll do like one more try. <coughs> Can you reflect the eye beams? I don't know. I don't really have good shields right now. Braid is also a good example of that. I hate that game. Which one? On the nose distillation of how playing games creates the meaning. Oh, sure. There's only so much of that you can really. I really wish my master sword wasn't breaking. So annoying. I wish it had more juice. I think the interactivity of the primary means for a game to convey interpretation of meaning. Yeah, I think that's true. I think that's why something like um, the Outer Wilds and like Oberdin are so good. They're so like because. Can't tell it any other way. It's gotta be a video game. It just won't work. I jumped! Oh, this game. Okay. Ooh, hit me here, hit me here, do it. Okay. Ooh. I'll check that in a minute. I don't think this is really doing that much damage, but whatever. Um, let's do it with the electronic one, see what happens. Oh, nope. Oh, here we go. Alright, didn't do as much damage as I would have liked. Okay! The electronic stuff's pretty good. Okay, okay. Smiley Burrito, thank you! Ooh, okay, I like when he does this move. This move, I'm good with. Oh no, this one sucks! <sighs> okay, run, Link! How long is he gonna fucking do this for? 
my question. Okay, we got him. We got him, everybody. Come on. Sword sucks. <gasps> yes, finally. Oh my god. I hate this dude. Okay, I don't have any space for anything. Yeah, I don't need this. Fuck this. Oop. Oop. Boggers. Anyway, smelly burrito. Thank you for the two months. I appreciate it. Give me all these. These I do need. I don't want that. I want this. 60. Nice. Okay, great. Whew. We did it. I hate these fights so much. I think they're so annoying. Anyway. Oh, yeah. We can climb some more now. We just need the pants next. Just need the pants. But I gotta go. So I will see y'all tomorrow. Honestly, I'm probably gonna keep playing Breath of the Wild. It is my birthday. So I might do something fun. But I don't know if I'll have the time to, like, coordinate a thing. We'll see. It would be nice, too. But... I don't know, but I don't feel I need to fix my other laptop to play Nancy Drew. It's driving me nuts. Your birthday was a couple days ago. Nice. Nice. Hope you had a great one. Anyway, um, let's see who's streaming. So we can raid them. Uh, Next Lander. Easy. Let's raid Next Lander. I'll see y'all over there. Alrighty. Goodbye, gamers. Goodbye. See you tomorrow.